How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're in a battle versus Garrett Legendstone in the Smogon Overused tier. Stick around till the end for a bonus battle, and with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Garrett. So they're going to lead off with Nine Tails, as I expected, as I led off with my Chandelier. Now the reason I went with Chandelier is because a it's Choice Scarfed. We can outspeed this thing. We can go for a Fire Blast. We can get the KO straight away if need be. Um, so I am just going to go straight for a Fire Blast. They probably switched Tyranitar or Glimora here, but going for the Fire Blast is still my most beneficial play. Um, they might try and sell the Aurora Veil, not expecting the Choice Scarf as well, which could really catch them off guard. So we go for the Fire Blast. They did not expect the Choice Scarf. We should be able to get the KO here as Nine Tails goes down. Off to a very good start with the Chandelier team. That's a pretty cool... And so Chandelier is a very underrated gem. It's like it's never used tier at the moment, um, which is pitiful for a Pokemon with such a high special attack. Um, but they're going to lead it going to Glimora. They know we're Choice Scarf now. We know we're Choice Scarf now. They can easily get their rocks up. They can get whatever they want out, really. Um, so what I'm going to do here is if I'm expecting like an Earth Power or a Power Gem, I should go into Reverb Room. I think Reverb Room is a good one here. The team is kind of built around Reverb Room as well. Um, the idea is to get Shift Gear off and get Sweepy Sweep from there. But we can't really do that whilst they have a Ditto, because Ditto can copy my shift gears, and that wouldn't be very good. So, and um, we float in the air with the air balloon. They do, in fact, go for a Stealth Rocks, which is absolutely fine by me. I'm looking at their team, and I'd say their best switch in right now is going to be Garchomp, um, because High Horsepower is going to hit everything really hard. So let's go for that High Horsepower real quick. They may stay in and Power Gem. They do stay in and Power Gem, and that's going to do a little bit of damage to us. Not too much, though. It does break our air balloon, though. Um, so now we'll go for a high horsepower and bosh the more it goes down to its sash, which is amazing So that's great and um, this is gonna sell the toxic debris unfortunately for us as there he goes But we do have the river room obviously who is no longer holding an air balloon so it can come in and soak those up So and uh, now we want to switch out because they're probably gonna go for an earth power this time They either go earth power or Garchomp one of the two and um, so we should go into something accordingly I think I'm gonna go Salamence. I think Salamence is a good switch here and um, there we go new they, they have Stayed in, probably to go for an Earth Power. I don't think they would go for another Power Gem there. So we're going to go into Salamence now, get that Intimidate off, which is great. Stones do dig in, which is unfortunate. If they go for another Power Gem here for some reason, which they have, then we lose Salamence. So that's an unfortunate loss on our part. I really didn't think they would stay in a Power Gem again. I thought they would like go for, uh, I don't know, an Earth Power or something like that, but they must not have Earth Power. So I guess if that's the case... Then Reverb Room should come in and circle those toxic spikes. Or no, Reverb Room has to come in here. So, and that's a really a, that's a really bad play on my behalf. Like I shouldn't. Uh, I don't know why I kind of assumed they would have Earth Power if like they were staying in. But the poison spikes have been taken away anyway, so it's fine. Uh, let's go for this time. We'll go for an Iron Head just because it'll hit everything. No, I think High Horsepower is still the way to go. Um, so they go for a Power Gem again. They're just letting the Glimora go down at this point, which is fair enough. As we go for that high horsepower, that's going to take out Glimora, which is great. We does this up the Toxic Spikes again. But um, we can always bring Greg Tusk in and get rid of those at some point. So Glimora goes down, which is fine. Glimora goes down. And we've got Teton, Metagross, Garchomp, and Ditto to worry about. Garchomp's going to definitely come in here, probably. Yeah, Garchomp comes in, the Paldea champion. Pretty threatening stuff right there. Especially if it's a scale shot set, we're kind of boned. So what do we do here? I'm leaning towards the Aloma Mola. I'm leaning towards the Great Tusk as well. It is defensive after all. We can Rapid Spin. I think I will go Great Tusk just to get that Rapid Spin off. And um, to get rid of those Stealth Frogs. So, uh, Great Tusk can come in now. There we go. Tuscany comes through. And Tuscany can definitely take any hit from this Garchomp. That's for sure. I mean, we are poisoned now, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is. If they go for a Physical Contact move, we're going to get some Rocky Helmet Chip. If they actually go for a Swords Dance. That is terrifying right there. Swords Dance is terrifying. I have to assume that they're scale shot, so they probably have loaded dice, right? So we should definitely go for a rapid spin, then a knockoff. I think. I think we definitely go for rapid spin, and we get a speed boost, and then we go for a knockoff. So they go for an EQ. They haven't got scale shot, by the looks of it. That's going to do a lot of damage to us. We get a rapid spin off, though, and that's going to do no damage to the Garchomp, but at the same time, it gets us a speed boost, and it gets rid of... Oh, the rough skin as well. Point spike, yep. Point spike is spear, and so do the stealth frog. So that's good. We managed to get rid of those. Now, the question is, do we outspeed this Garchomp after our rapid spin? I don't think we do. But I could be wrong. I, I could very well be wrong. Do we go for a knockoff or do we go for a Stealth Rocks? I think knockoff is for the best. So I'm going to go for a knockoff real quick. They actually go for a scale shot and they do connect. And that is going to take out a good old Great Tusk. So they're going to get a boost in speed. 
Um, and they're also getting a defense drop. So it's not the end of the world. It's definitely not the best position to be in, that's for sure. The only problem we've got now is Garchomp could easily pull this back for them. So I'm going to have to go a Loma Mola and try and scold it. Pretty much. Or we can go into the Iron Valiant and... Uh, move, um, no, because if they go... Right, here's the thing, right? If we go Iron Valiant, then they could just go Metagross. I think we go Iron Valiant and get the booster energy. So we'll go Iron Valiant. We'll get that booster energy. It's going to pop. Give us a speed boost, which is going to be great. Means we outspeed the Garchomp now after a scale shot, which is fantastic. And um, we can just go for a Moonblast, but I really want to say... They went for a scale shot against my Great Tusk to finish us off. So I'm going to Encore it just in case they Terra. So there we go. Encore can come through now. So they withdraw the Garchomp. They don't want to get Encore. They don't want to get out of Sped and KO with a Moonblast. Fair enough. They're going to go into Metagross. So unfortunately, we didn't get to pull off the Encore. It's nice and shiny, the Metagross is, though, which is always cool. We go for the Encore. Obviously, he's doing nothing to this uh, Metagross, so that's unfortunate. So what do we do here? So I'm leaning towards Terra Steel. I think Terra Steel is the way to go Knock Off. So I am going to Terra Steel Knock Off right here. I don't think they'll expect it at all. So we're going to Terrestrialize into a Steel type so that we can be resistant to that Meteor Mash or Heavy Slam or whatever it wants to go for. And we do have decent physical defense as well, unlike our special defense. So we should be able to take an Earthquake if they do predict the Terra Steel Terra, but I don't think they will. So let's see how this plays out for us. So they, we go for a knockoff. They do, in fact, not go for a bullet punch. We get the knockoff off, which is going to knock off their choice ban, which is amazing. As they go for a psychic fangs, which isn't going to do much damage to us at all. Um, now we can go for a close combat if we really want to. I am leaning towards it, but it gives us a bit of a drop in our defenses. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to... Um, because I don't want them to go for an earthquake, now that they can change up moves, I'm going to go for an encore. Just to lock them into that Psychic Fangs, because that's going to be really useful to us if we can do that. So, there we go. They're Encored into Psychic Fangs, which means they now go for a Psychic Fangs, which doesn't do much damage. Um, and we can safely go for another knockoff to get more damage off on them. So, we'll go for the knockoff real quick. There we go. Knockoff comes through. Doesn't get the KO, obviously, but it means choice. By, it means close combat will KO the next turn. Um, as there we go. So, that, that, that Psychic Fangs isn't going to KO us. So, we go for a close combat here. They may want to go into the uh, Garchomp to get the Rough Skin. If they do go to the Garchomp to get the Rough Skin, that is fair enough. But I don't think they will. I think they'll go for a Bullet Punch, if anything. No, they don't even go for a Bullet Punch. We go for the close combat. Metagross goes down, which is fantastic. So, with Metagross out of the way, all we have to worry about now is the Ditto. But the Ditto can't really touch us because... It'll be, well, it'll be, a, it'll be a speed tie. Because I don't think Ditto copies Booster Energy Boost. Sent out the Tyranitar. So Tyranitar comes in. That's an interesting one. So I'm guessing this is just to get the Sandstream up and also just so they can Terra. If I had to guess, they're going to Terra here. Um, so I want to go for Moonblast. I want to go for Close Combat. But again, I think they're going to Terra. So if it's anything, it's going to be Terra Ghost. It'll be Terra Ghost. So I kind of want to go for a knockoff or I want to go for a Close Combat. They haven't terra yet though. So, or did they? They didn't, did they? They definitely didn't. So do we go for a knockoff expecting a Terra Ghost? Or it won't KO anyway. Or do we go for a close combat? If I do if they do Terra Ghost, we've got Chandelier for it. Which is fine. Um so I guess we just go for a CC here. And um, they do terrestrialize. Okay, so they are gonna Terra. What type are they gonna Terra into? A ghost type? Probably, right? Oh, and the Terra flying. Okay, so knockoff still wouldn't have been the best op option for us, so. And um, that's great and all. They're going to lose their special defense boost from the Sandstorm. As uh, we go for a CC now, which is definitely going to do a little bit of chip damage. Not too much, though. And um, we get a defense drop as well, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. As uh, they go for a knockoff, which is going to KO us, no problem. So knockoff comes through. Iron Valiant did pretty good there. It didn't, you know, do major work. It took out the Metagross, which is unexpected. But I think Chandelure is going to be our wink on here. So they're going to get buffed by the Sandstorm, as, as you'd expect. So our best bet is probably going to be um, the Rev of Room with a Gunk Shot. Because Rev of Room will outspeed the Tyranitar here. So let's go for Rev of Room real quick. Neum comes in. Absolute Neum. Let's go for a Gunk Shot and hope we don't miss. That's going to be uh, ideal. So we go for the Gunk Shot. We don't miss, which is nice. That's going to do a lot of damage to the T-Tar. Um, enough damage to where it's like, yeah, that's great type thing. And um, they go for a knockoff. And even though we already have no item, it still KOs Rev of Room, unfortunately. Um, but the T-Tar being weakened and being weak to the Sandstorm that it set up is pretty useful for us because it means Chandelure can now come in and Shadow Ball a lot of things. So we'll go Chandelure, like so. Good old para hacks. There we go. Chandelure comes in and we can just safely take out this uh, T-Tar with a Shadow Ball, like so. So let's just do it. Shadow Ball comes through, T-Tar goes down. 
Jobs are good and job is a good and so Titar goes down right there out of its terrestrialization form Like so nice and shiny as well. I forgot to say it was nice and shiny, but <laughs> I've just got back from work. So I'm like Ugh. <laughs> In comes ditto the Peldea champion. So ditto comes in now. Here's the thing Ditto is gonna transform into us and it's probably choice scarfed um, so it's gonna transform into a shiny version of ours, which is great um, I'm gonna go I want to go for another shadow ball I can't exactly switch an Aloma Molar in. So we're going to have to try the speed tie. We'll have to go for the speed tie. We do win the speed tie, which is great. They have less amount of health than us because it's Deo. So Shadow Ball is going to KO that Deo real quick. And their only chance there was winning the speed tie. So that's unfortunate for them. As now, it doesn't matter how powerful this Garchomp gets. Shadow Ball probably will 2 it KO. Which means that if they go for a scale shot, they're not going to get enough power to take out the Aloma Mola. If they go for a sword dance, they're not going to get enough speed to outspeed the Chandelure. So we go for a Shadow Ball and we should be able to pull a W here. A really close W as well at that. So Shadow Ball comes through. Chandelure is looking like the MVP right now. If they go for a scale shot. Or we get a special defense drop as well, which is nice. They go for a scale shot, which isn't going to KO. Which is going to KO, sorry. Um, but because they didn't go for a Swords Dance there, which they really couldn't do, really. They have to be able to outspeed us. And they get a crit on the last one. That's not, 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 whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the crit. So anyway, the Shadow Ball lowering the special defense is really useful for us. Because it means now, Aloma Mola can come in and can probably scold this thing to death. As they get a defense drop and a speed boost. Um, so because they didn't get that Sandstorm up, the, the Swords Dance up, sorry. We don't have to worry about them taking out Aloma Mola just yet. So we'll go into Palindrome real quick. And then we'll be able to go for a Scold now. And Scold should 2 it KO the Garchomp from there. And I don't think they can 2 it KO us. They go for a Swords Dance. I'm pretty sure Scale Shot still doesn't KO. Um, as we go for a Scold. And we might even get burned, to be fair. We do. We do get the burn, so they have no chance. Aloma Mola completely hardballs this Garchomp. As there is the burn coming into effect. Now we can just go for a Protect if we want to. Um, I'm not. I'm going to go for a Scold. Let him attack. I, I, let, let him attack. See if they get a crit. They go for an Iron Head because they realize there isn't really much they can do here. And uh, we go for the Scold. And that is going to be the game. So GG, Garrett, that was a pretty fun one. Um, I did enjoy it. The, you know, the, the Garchomp was pretty threatening, to be say the least. But I think Chandelure was the MVP of that game, to be honest with you. So uh, GG, Garrett, that was a fun one. And it's time for the bonus battle. We're battling against Poof again from the Discord server in the overused tier. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the team you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, poof. So they're going to lead off with Buddy, the historic genius, the Arcanine, as I led off with my Aloma Mola. Um, this may look like I predicted their lead really well, but I actually predicted the Hisuian Samura, which I was just going to scold. But this works out tons better. They get the Intimidate off, which is good to know they're Intimidate and not Justified. And I'm kind of assuming that they're going to switch out here, so I do want to go for a flip turn. Just because, like, why would they stay in against an Aloma Mola with a um, Arcanine? Unless they want to burn us with a Willow Wisp, which would kind of make sense. I will say, though, it is really cool to see regular Arcanine again. Um, so they do withdraw, and they're going to go into Grim the Unrivaled, which is going to be what? The Chestnut. So Chestnut comes through. We go for a flip turn. Get a little bit of chip. No chip, really. But um, <laughs> we get out of there, at least. And we can now go into whatever we want against this Chestnut. And I'm leaning towards the Chandelier with a Fire Blast, because these things are normally Terra Steel. So I think we get a free Fire Blast at that point. Um, that probably baits in the uh, Glorian Slow King, that's for sure. Or we could go into Iron Valiant, but Moon Blasts, um, if they Terra Steel, will be boned. I'm also leaning towards the um, Rever Room, because Rever Room does pretty well against the team after a Shift Gear. We just need to weaken this thing first. So I think what I might do is I might just go with the Chandelure play, uh, bait in the Glorian Slow King. Apparently, I'm low battery on my uh, controller. Let me put a, a stop to that. There we go. Simply just plug and play. Plug and play. So they withdraw. Are they going to go Galarian Slow, Slow Sloking or Umbreon? Umbreon would also be good. Moonshire the Twinkling Star. That's got to be the Umbreon, right? It is the Umbreon coming through. We go for a Fire Blast. At least we know we don't have to worry about any chilly receptions. That does a lot of damage, which is nice. Um, a nice bit of damage. So they are leftovers, which is good to know. They probably go for a Wish here, if I had to guess. Um, so what I'm going to do here is, because they might have Foul Play... I'm going to go into Great Tusk and scare it out and get the Stealth Rocks up. That's what I'm going to do. So we'll withdraw a Chandelure because it can't really touch this Umbreon. And we'll go straight into the Great Tusk because we can scare them out. They might think it's going to go for a close combat. Um, they go for a Toxic though, which is kind of bad for us. Um, it does put us on a bit of a timer. But then again, we're on a 20 minute timer anyway. So who cares? Who cares? So a couple of things I could do here is they're going to go into Chestnut more than likely. 
So we go straight for the Stealth Rock. Stealth Rocks are going to be really important because they do not have a Hazard Clearer, which is amazing for us. Um, we'll get the Stealth Rocks up and they're there to go. The Withdraw the Umbreon, which is absolutely fine by me. And they're going to go into Grim the Unrival, which was the Chestnut, I believe. So there we go. Chestnut comes through. We get the Stealth Rocks up, which is great. There we go. They were probably expecting a close combat there, but we are not close combat on this Great Tusk. And um, we are a more defensive utility one. So, um, yeah, the, the poison's going to rack up a little bit, but we can just switch out here into something else. They probably go for a knockoff expecting the Chandelure to come in. So I kind of want to go Loma Mola and try and scald it. Um, or we could go into the uh, Iron Valley and activate the, be uh, the booster energy and then not have to worry about it at all. That's another option for us. Um, if we assume they are going to go for a knockoff, maybe we should stay in and go for a knockoff of our own. That's also a possibility. Yeah, I think I'll go for a knockoff of my own because they probably go for a knockoff expecting the Chandelure to come in, right? Um, so we knock off their leftovers, which is great. And then they go for a knockoff of their own. So we we didn't go into the Chandelure, which is amazing. And that's going to work out really nicely for us. So they knock off our Rocky Helmet, but they do get hurt by it in the process, which is amazing as well. I'm saying everything's amazing today. You know why it is? Because it's been a long day. It's been a long day. So now I'm going to go into Chandelure because they're probably not going to knock off again. They'll probably go for a grass type stab move of some kind. So we're going to Parahax the uh, Chandelure, like so. They may go for a spiky shield. They go for a leech seed and they miss, which is great for us. No health recovery for you. So they probably go for a spiky shield to scout because they might have realized we're choiced. I don't think they will have yet. They probably just go straight into Umbreon. I am going to go straight for the Fire Blast again, though, because if they go into the Umbreon again, we're just going to rack up damage on that thing, and that's going to be really useful. So Moonshine, the Twinkling Star comes in again. That is the Umbreon, as we know. Get some Stealth Rock shit, which is nice. And now Fire Blast is going to definitely sting a little bit. And if we can get the burn, that'd be amazing. But I don't think we will. And I, sh I shouldn't ask for the burn, but, um, it, you know, it would it'd be nice, you know? It'd be nice. So now I'm assuming they're going to expect the Great Tusk to come in to take the poison or whatever move they want to go for. And they're probably going to switch out again. So I think they're going to make a double. I'm going to go for that Fire Blast again. Why not? They don't make the double. We go for the Fire Blast. That should still do a lot of damage. As um, they go for a Moonlight this turn. Expecting the Great Tusk to come in maybe. I don't know. But this turn. Since they can Moonlight more damage than we can deal. They're either going to go for a, to a, a, a Toxic again. Or... They're going to go for that nice and powerful something else, um, a, a Moonlight again. So I'm going to go into my Rev of Room instead. I think re it's time we go into Rev of Room here. Rev of Room does really well against their entire team um, after it gets a uh, shift gear up, that is, of course. Um, so we float in the air of our air balloon. They do go for a Moonlight once again, just to get their health back up. I kind of gave them that. I, didn't, I, I, I just kind of wanted to predict them to make a double. If they'd have made the double switch and I predicted it right, that would have been amazing. But we unfortunately didn't, so... Uh, shift gear boosts your attack stat and sharp boost speed. So we will outspeed the Iron Valiant after booster energy, which is good to know. Um, so I am going to go for a shift gear. I don't see any reason not to. So shift gear comes through. If they go for a foul play, then so be it. But we haven't got that higher of an attack stat after the attack raise. So foul play won't KO us. As there is, the foul play comes through. Oh, wow. That did way more damage than I wanted it to. Way more damage than I wanted it to. Um, I guess we go for a gun shot here just to see if we can get enough damage off on them. But they do withdraw. What are they going to go into? Are they going to go into the Arcanine? Buddy, that's the Arcanine, right? Let's hit it with a gun shot. They get the Intimidate off, which means we're back to neutral attack. And then we go for a gun shot. We don't miss, which is nice. Let's see how much damage this does. It's a clean one at KO oh, after the poison. That's amazing damage from Reverie right there. No extreme speeds for you, I'm afraid, Arcanine. Not at all. So Rev of Room actually put in some work, which is amazing. Taking out the Arcanine is going to be clutch as heck. But um, now they can just go into pretty much anything they want with a priority move. Um, so they could have Aqua Jet or Sucker Punch on the Hisuian Samurott. They do go into the Samurott. I'm assuming they're going to go for a priority move. But at the same time, I kind of want to call their bluff. Because we can just go into a Loma Mola here. So they probably go for a Ceaseless Edge. So I kind of want to go for another Gung Shot. Should I go it? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Ah, oh, no, they do have the Sucker Punch. Never mind. Ah, uh, they didn't fall for it. I'm, I'm overthinking it a bit today, probably because it's been such a long day. But, you know, you'll have to forgive me if I'm overthinking it. Um, it is what it is at the end of the day. So, we can go Salamance, we can get Intimidate off, and we can start doing the Dragon Dance stuff. Or, we can go Shandy and go for an Energy Ball. Or, something else. I'm leaning towards the, Salam uh, the Salamance to get the Intimidate off, though. So, I'm going to go into Calamity. The Salamance. There we go. Get that Intimidate off, which is always nice. 
And then we can just go for a Dragon Dance. I, I don't see any reason not to unless they're... Unless they're Booster Energy Speed on Iron Valiance. They haven't Terrored. I think we go for a Dragon Dance, personally. So I'm going to go for that Dragon Dance real quick, like so. They probably go for a Flip Turn here or a Ceaseless Edge, but I don't know which one they're going to go for. As they go for the Ceaseless Edge, that's going to sting a little bit. Not too much, though, and it sets up the Spikes. So Spikes are up, but we do have our Great Tusk still in check, and they haven't got Ghost Type, so that's good to know. So let's go for another Dragon Dance. Um, they go for a Sucker Punch this turn, expecting us to attack, but we're not actually going to attack. We're just going to go straight for another Dragon Dance. Because I need to be at plus two speed in order to take on that um, Iron Valiant, that's for sure. So, because if they're booster energy, they'll outspeed us after one Dragon Dance. So, now we go for a Dragon Claw because it'll definitely take out the Samurott. They go for a Sucker Punch, which is definitely going to do a bit of damage to us. Um, but we, our Dragon Claw should take out the Hisuian Samurott here as it does. So, down goes the Samurott. Umbreon definitely goes down to a Dragon Claw. Maybe. I don't know, actually. That's a, that's a good point. Does it? <laughs> Grim comes in, the Unrivaled. So, if we assume. That Grim over here is going to Terra into a Terra Steel because we can have dual wing beat for all they know. We should go for an Earthquake. I could be overthinking it. I've been overthinking it, so I think I'm just going to go safe for the Dragon Claw. I think that's the way to go about it. No, they do Terra. The one time I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to overthink it. They actually do what I thought they were going to do. And that's Terra Fairy. So Earthquake still wouldn't have KO'd. Iron Head, on the other hand, probably would have. Which is a shame. So Dragon Claw doesn't affect, which is unfortunate. As uh, they go for a knockoff, which is definitely going to KO us. Yep, it KOs us and it knocks off our Lumberry as well. So Gr Salamance goes down. Um, unfortunately, I could have gone for an Iron Head there. But again, I, I thought they would Terra Steel if they were going to Terra. But they obviously just didn't do that either. Um, so now what do we do? What do we do indeed? Um, if we assume they're going to go for a you know, knockoff, we, we could go into our Valiant. We could go into our Valiant. We still got Terra Steel on it. We could definitely go Valiant and pull back from here, I think. I'm pretty sure Bulletproof doesn't stop Moonblast as well. So I'm pretty sure we're all right. Um, so we get that booster energy in speed, which is great. Um, they probably expect us to Terra here. Um, I'm not going to Terra. I'm going to Encore. Because they're going to go for a knock. I'm going to encore them into knockoff. That's what I'm going to do. Because I think they try and switch your moves here. So they go for a spiky shield, which is good to know. As uh, we try to go for an encore on them, which isn't going to work now. As it gets protected against. So that's good to know. Um, we can't. We can encore them into spiky shield if we want to, but they probably switch out now if that's the case. So I'm going to go for a. I'm going to go for a Moonblast just to get some damage off because they probably are going to switch out as they do. Are they going to go into the Slow King? That's the real question. Hard Hat. That's got to be the Slow King, right? It is the Slow King. So Slow King comes in, gets some Stealth Rock Chip, which is always nice. We go for a Moonblast, which is going to do no damage. Actually, it does a bit more damage than I would have liked it to, um, which is great. The uh, More damage than I thought it would do. That's what I'm trying to say. So... Uh, now, the obvious play here is to Terra Steel and go for a knockoff. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. There we go. Terra Steel. See, I'm Terra Steel. Chestnut wasn't Terra Steel like a fall, but I'm Terra Steel. So it's all good. So there we go. We trash into a Steel type. We can take a Sludge Bomb, no problem now. They'll be uh, immune to it. And then we can just go for a knockoff. And hopefully, I'm Valiant can do put some dents in their team, which is going to be great. Um, so we go for that knockoff. That's going to do a lot of damage. Nicely done. Nicely done. They knock off their leftovers. And they go for a Psychic, which is going to sting a little bit. Not too much, though. As there we go. That's not too bad. Not too bad of a damage. So I'm going to go for an Encore here. Because I don't want them to heal. No, I'm going to go for a Knockoff. I'm going to go for a Knockoff because they probably chilly Reception to get that Regenerator. If anything. So they withdraw. Okay, so then they're not wanting to take a Knockoff, which makes a lot of sense. Or be Encored into Psychic. They're going to go into Grim, the Unrivaled. Who, by the way, has... Got a fighting type move and drain punch or something along those lines. We knock off no item because we knocked it off earlier, which is great. And now we just go for a Moonblast because why not? Let's just see if we can get some damage off on it. As that nearly gets the KO, not quite. We get the special attack drop. And then they go for a body press, which will definitely take us out, unfortunately. So that Moonblast barely KOing is really annoying. But at least the Chestnut's weakened. The only problem we've got now is they've got a Slow King nearly back at full health. They've got an Umbreon at full health. They've got an Iron Valiant at full health. What do we do? What do we do? 
I am leaning towards the chandelier into the fire blast switch. I'm also leaning towards the Aloma Molar into the flip turn switch. Um, flip turn could definitely KO this chestnut, that's for sure. Or we could go Great Tusk. I I'm leaning towards the Aloma Mola, to be honest with you. So that's what I'm going to do. Aloma Mola comes through. They probably don't have Grass Stab because they have Knock Off, they have Body Press, they have Spiky Shield, they probably are, and they have Leech, like, Leech Seed. So we know, we're, we know we're safe here. So let's go for a Flip Turn, expecting them to switch out. Or a Knock Off, and that works as well. They Knock Off our Leftovers, which can be unfortunate, but we do have the Regenerator ability, which isn't too bad. So we're going to get rid of that Chestnut with the Flip Turn, and that's going to be it for the Chestnut. So that's great. Um, great, 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 great stuff. But we still have that Umbreon Glorian Sloking Core to take on, so... Can Chandelure break through that? It was the MVP in the last game. Can it be the MVP in this game as well? That is the real question. Uh, I'm going to go into the Chandelure now. Because they probably go into their Iron Valiant to clean up right now. Right? The Iron Valiant probably comes in, right? We get hit by the spikes, which is unfortunate. That might lower our chances of living a knockoff. Moonshine and the Twinkling Star comes in though. Now, here's the thing. If we assume Iron Valiant's going to be... Um, I think we should trick this thing. That's what I think we should do. I think we trick it and then we can get rid of it. So let's go for a trick first because Chandelier outspeeds Umbreon and slow the sloking anyway. Um, but the Iron Valiant is probably booster energy. So that means we probably will outspeed even with Choice Scarf. So give the Choice Scarf to the Umbreon, which is great. They go for what exactly? A foul play, which is going to sting Chandelier quite a bit. Quite a bit. Um, but what we can do here is we can just switch into a Loma Mola, go for a wish and get a free switch back into Chandelier. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back into the Aloma Mola. I'm going to get that wish off. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the um, we'll go into the Great Tusk. Actually, we'll wish into the Great Tusk. Or we'll flip turn one of the two. So we get hurt by the spikes. They go for the foul play. It's not going to do out, of course. And um, they probably expect a wish here. So I'm going to go for a flip turn instead. They actually go for another foul play, um, which is going to do no damage. But we go for that flip turn, get a bit of chip damage off with a critical hit flip turn. That's great. Now we can go straight to Great Tusk. Like so. Good old Tuscany. And we can get rid of this Umbreon some, somehow. So um, we'll Earthquake. That's what we'll do. We'll Earthquake. They can't switch the Sloking in. Iron Valiant doesn't really want to take an Earthquake. It can, it can, but it doesn't really want to. So I think they just let this Umbreon go down here. So I'm going to go for an EQ. They withdraw. Okay, what are they going to go into? Are they going to go Sloking or are they going to expect a close combat? Hard hat. They go into the Sloking. So they are expecting a close combat here. By the way, we've brought it in. They're going to get some Stealth Rock damage. And then we go for an EQ, which should take them out, which is amazing. So down goes Galarian Sloking. So we got rid of one of the two. I still don't think we have any way to defeat the Iron Valiant, to be honest with you. I really don't because they can just go into the Iron Valiant now. They can go into the Iron Valiant now and they can just do everything. Duelist comes in. Iron Valiant is going to pull this back for them. I know it is. So the Stealth Frogs dig in, which is great. Breaks the potential Satch. They are Booster Energy, which is good to know. Let's go for an EQ. There's no real reason not to. They go for the Moon Blast, which is going to sting quite a bit. And Great Tusk is going to go down. So that is unfortunate. But at the same time, it's not the end of the world. We can handle this. No problem. They are Life Orb, which is good to know. Um, so I'm going to go Aloma Mola Lola. Aloma Mola Lola Lola. Like so. And what I'm going to do here is, because they probably have Thunderbolt, right? If they're Life Orb. I do want to protect, but I want to also go for a Wish. Because they, they're probably not going to have Knock Off. So I do want to go for the Wish here. So they withdraw. They withdraw. And they go into Moonshine, which is great for us. That thing is great for us. As uh, we go for a Wish. There we go. And now what we need to do is flip turn. So I'm going to flip turn real quick. We should be slower. So the Umbreon should outspeed us thanks to its choice scarf. They go for a Snarl, which is a good move to go for there. It's going to lower our special attack. As a, Hopefully we get a crit flip turn again. That'd be nice. No, not really. Um, so flip turn isn't going to do too much damage. Um, but we're able to bring in good old Shandy over here and get a wish back. So let's go for that like so. There we go. Chandelure comes back through. We get hurt by the spikes, but we're going to get all our health back from that wish real quick. There we go. Wish comes through. Now, I'm hoping the Iron Valiant doesn't have Shadow Ball. That'd be ideal. So let's go for a Fire Blast first and foremost. There we go. Fire Blast comes through. We still outspeed even with the Choice Scarf gone. Nearly gets the KO. They go for a Snarl. 
and they miss. Chandelure may just pull this back. Let's go for a Shadow Ball so we don't miss and KO this Umbreon. Now that we're at full HP because they missed the Snarl and we didn't get our special attack dropped, I am Valiant. Unless it's like if Shadow Ball KOs us, that's fine. But I have a feeling that we're going to live the Shadow Ball and we're going to hit the Fire Blast and it's going to KO the Iron Valiant. I don't think Shadow Ball KOs the Iron Valiant, to be honest with you, but I know Fire Blast will. So I'm going to go for it. They go for a Liquidation. No. But we live on AHP. Come on, Chandler. Don't miss this Fire Blast. Don't miss this Fire Blast, whatever you do. We don't miss the Fire Blast. We cleanly KO the Iron Valiant and Chandler once again. What an epic battle that was. That was awesome. That was awesome. There was a little bit of hacks on both sides. But, you know, that is the game we play. But GG Poof, that is a really cool game. I really enjoyed that one. GG. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Let me know if you use it. I want to hear about all your stories in the comment section down below. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.